Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Chris Vermeulen from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Chris, what kind of uh, market are we seeing right now? Is it going to be strong right up to Christmas? Uh, well, right now, it's definitely, uh, we're seeing some pretty strong market. Uh, obviously, we've been running here for almost eight weeks uh, since that uh, October kind of sell-off and bottom got put in place. And this week, seasonality-wise, is one of the strongest weeks of the year for equities. Uh, of course, I think there's a lot of things that kind of come into play. It's a holiday week in the U.S., Thanksgiving. Typically, holiday weeks are strong for stocks. Uh, we're coming into the year end, one of the, you know, we're coming into the last, uh, month of the year and we're going to see a lot, I think, window dressing and hedge funds from here on in kind of starting to rotate into the, uh, top performing asset classes and, and, and stocks to make sure their investors see their, their, their statements saying, hey, I'm in all the good things, um, I'm happy no matter what happens. So we, we tend to see that happen. Um, this time of the year. So we're seeing a, a big squeeze to the upside. And of course, with the markets continuing to just march higher and higher, it has uh, traders and investors in general just not afraid of falling prices. And we've seen this across the board with the VIX and the put call ratio, um, all giving us warning signs that no one's afraid that there's going to be a correction. And no one's buying options, any downside insurance in case there is one. So that's usually when the market likes to have a sell-off and catch most people off guard. Right. When you're the most confident, that's when they pull the carpet out from under you. Yeah, right when you think you've got it figured out, the market's got a great way of uh, knocking you right back on the ground. and <laughs> uh, It can make you very sober very quick. Now, of course, we've had a bull market for 11 years. We have traders who have never seen a recession or seen a major drop is that a factor when people are so positive? Uh, yeah, every every bear market is going to have a brand new batch of of traders and investors who have never lived through one yet. So, uh, I mean, there, it's kind of a repeating cycle, obviously, but um, it's going to definitely be an eye opening experience for a lot of people. And my concern with the way the markets have been trading for the last, really since 2015, where we really started to see how sharp some of these flash crashes and these, these sell-offs can happen in three or four days, uh, even in a week or two, you know, we can see some huge moves in the market. And my concern is this time around, it, it, it's not going to be a nice kind of, I wouldn't say controlled, but a, more or less a controlled bear market where it takes, you know, six, eight, 13 months to unfold. My concern is because we have so uh, so little liquidity in the markets compared to what we used to have 10 years ago and before, I mean, the markets could just go into one of these free falls and, you know, be dropping 5 or 6% a day and the market's just having to, to close early and, and, you know, have these cap limits getting hit. So it's going to be really interesting of when things do turn around, how it's going to react, and it could be exceptionally hard to catch uh, even as a full-time trader because the market pretty much is blink of an eye you can miss these huge moves the way the computers run and, and automated trading and uh, the lack of liquidity so things can drop fast you were telling me off air a lack of interest in the so-called safe havens yeah, well, you know, the markets are hitting new all-time highs, the stock market, and of course, uh, we've been seeing a strong rally uh, week after week, and investors just are, you know, they're gung-ho for getting into equities, and this week feels like it's one of those exhaustion 
type of uh, tops in the market, whereas we're seeing stocks rally. There's no fear with the VIX. Uh, put call ratio, no one's doing downside protection. And yesterday we saw the Russell 2000, which are the small cap stocks, the, the most volatile of the stocks. Those rallied and, and had a huge move of over 2%. And typically small cap stocks lead the way. And um, the fact that we have no fear in the market and everybody piled into small cap stocks yesterday makes me believe that this is an exhaustion move to the top at the top here, and we're going to start to see a pretty good correction unfold, potentially going into Christmas, uh, December 25th time. So it's going to be uh, definitely an interesting time to trade. We had a big gap up on Monday on the stock market. Gaps almost always get filled. So the market has to give back uh, this week's gains and to really close that gap before it's probably going to continue to go a whole lot higher. So there's a lot of things uh, over the next probably 10 trading days, it makes me feel as though we're going to start to see some type of pullback, at least to negate this week's gains. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after the break. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what's natural gas doing? Well, yeah, natural gas has had uh, quite a year. Uh, really, since since August, it, it's had some huge oscillations and rallies and corrections, and it's really actually been uh, one of the top performers for us this year. In August, it put in a, a nice bottoming formation. It hit our downside target of around $2, and from there, it built a base. And we saw this massive rally uh, which we ended up trading. And then we saw the market sell off. It built another base almost identical to the August base. It built the same thing last month in October. And we played that breakout and that rally again to the upside right here until to, to November. And then we've seen the market hit, uh, hit our target. We actually played an inverse ETF. Natural gas has sold off, uh, in a big way this week and um, is making new multi-week lows, and it's, it's still in a downtrend. But overall, natural gas, when you look at the big picture, it's pulling back. Natural gas is now, I think, going to start to form a bottoming formation, and I think it's going to have a, another run higher. I think the next move higher, which I don't think will start for a few weeks, we need to build a, a more of a base still, but I think we could see natural gas have a, have a holiday or a, a winter rally above the $3 mark. And you look at the, the daily chart, it's been forming a nice pattern of, of higher lows and higher highs. The rallies have been very strong with heavy volume. And I think we're going to see the same thing happen again. And once the base gets put in, looking for $3 plus on natural gas, and uh, it could be a great uh, winter trade again. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. 
Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Is there going to be increased action in gold, or are people staying put right now? Well, you know, yeah, people are staying put at this point. And until there's real fear in the market, I don't think we're going to see gold start to pick up. And, you know, right now we're actually kind of seeing what I almost call is, is the smart money moving into kind of the big, the real safe haven, which are bonds. Right now, you look at the money, and we've seen bonds have a bounce over the last uh, about week and a half, while gold and miners have been trading lower. And to me, the the big money, the smart money, is saying, okay, stock market here is a little frothy over the last two weeks. They've been slowly moving into uh, bonds just to protect their assets. And really, over the last two weeks, we've been seeing some intraday, when we follow the intraday charts, some really big distribution selling. So we see some huge orders going through uh, several times a day, hitting the market, knocking it down. So big players are trimming their portfolios, but the light volume and the positive bias just buys the market right back up again. So we've been seeing this distribution going on in the stock market intraday for two weeks. The bond market has been slowly creeping higher, and that's where the smart money is kind of just moving, large amounts of smart money. Where the average trader right now is gung-ho, 100% bullish on stocks. They're moving into the most risky small caps, the Russell 2000. And more or less, they're they're getting rid of their gold and their miners and their silvers, and it's been underperforming. So until we see the small caps in the stock market uh, have some big bout of selling, that is enough to trigger fear in the average trader. We'll see the VIX start to spike that's when I think we'll start to see precious metals and miners pick up. Right now, the masses who are kind of just slowly getting out of the metal sector, um, they haven't, they need a, they need to be struck with some fear before they start to go, hey, it's time to get back into metals and miners. So until we see the VIX start to spike, um, I think we're going to see the precious metals sector continue, continue to flounder in trade sideways, which is, perfectly fine the big long-term chart of gold the pattern of it trading sideways and lower like it has been since august is extremely bullish there's nothing wrong with it continuing to drift sideways or lower so all we got to do is give it time eventually it should turn up and start to break out and it should be off to the races it just might not happen before christmas it could be in 2020 what's going on with crude well crude's had a pretty volatile week last week it's man it has been all over the place uh, we've seen massive drops two-day drops followed by two-day strong rallies and here we are back up to the upper end of its trading range and uh, i don't see it really getting going too much higher uh, i think the last time you and i talked we were talking about the the 59 60 per barrel area uh, more or less crude hit 59 dollars uh, last week and it's stuck kind of under that price range but it is still trending up it does have a little bit of a bullish formation but it's stuck under that resistance area uh, to me I'm more excited about crude when it starts to break down the longer term uh, chart and the pictures are, are showing a lot more potential downside than there is to the upside so overall I'm letting it continue to kind of grind its way higher with its its kind of uncertain volatility it's got very kind of strange price action, very tough to trade um, until it kind of fizzles that out and we start to see some new opportunity to the downside. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. What's happening with cryptocurrencies? We get, looking at uh, the Bitcoin, I mean, we've seen it. We had a, a huge pop in October and it's really tough because it, the way it moves is a lot like gold or silver in, to some regard in terms of in one day it can have a huge move and then that moves more or less done and it fizzles out and that's what we've seen we we saw a two day move more or less in bitcoin and since then the last month uh, in change it's been just selling off and fading lower and lower and lower now the long term chart of bitcoin is still really bullish we we're we're looking at this potential type of price action that it's selling off into now i think we could find a low over the next week or two if we start to see a low, um, if you're a bottom picker type of trader, very small position, I think it could be setting up for uh, what could be a really good end of year rally going forward. But at this point, you know, it is 
in a sell-off mode, volume is rising, so there's more sellers stepping into the market. There's some panic, um, which um, really is actually a bullish sign, which is uh, which is why I'm saying I think over the next week or so, we could see Bitcoin put a bottom in. Because right now, everyone is just wanting out of Bitcoin. They're panicking. They're selling. They're willing to sell it for a much lower price and just get them out. And volume's ramping up, meaning a lot of people are feeling that way. That's usually when a bottom gets put in. But bottoms are really volatile. Some of the biggest moves happened in the last couple of trading sessions. So we just got to let the market find a bottom here and uh, and build some type of bottoming formation. It almost did in October, but it never had any follow through buying. And it's you know here we are now at new multi uh, multi month lows, waiting for some new pattern to form. So really, you just got to sit tight with Bitcoin. I do feel as though it's going to put a bottom in here soon. But you don't want to try picking a bottom just yet. Any sign that the plunge in the marijuana stocks is over? Um, I don't really follow those too much. But, I mean, they definitely have had quite a a decline. And, um, you know, there's going to be a bottom. It's going to take some time. I mean, it's been a big sell-off. They've just been slowly losing favor. It's actually a lot like what uh, Bitcoin has been doing the last month and a half. It's a similar type of mentality where people have just kind of given up on it. I mean, you know, everyone was wanting in and got into those stocks, you know, a year and a half ago, and uh, they were all excited about it. And then early this year, everyone you knew was buying more and moving in, and and they were they weren't traders. These were just average people on the streets, all trying to buy into the marijuana stocks and. I think now it's just there's so many people moved into them that it's going to be a, a long process for them to all sell their positions and give up on it. Um, really, that move was done a long time ago, and right now it's kind of dead money. And uh, there might be some – might come back to life one last time for another push higher, but overall it uh, it needs a lot of work done before the masses, the amount of shares that are held by kind of non-traders – work themselves out of those uh, positions, and I think it'll keep a, a, a lid on things. Chris, so how would you sum up what's going on right now? Well, I mean, if you're a, a swing trader in the market, you know, I'd be I'd be just watching the equities market. I, I, I'd expect some type of pullback or pause over the next week or so. Um, at, at this point, we're still in a, a full-blown bull market. I mean, pullbacks can be bought in terms of equity, and... Um, Really, until the precious metals start to reverse and show some signs of a bottom and start to make some higher lows and higher highs, you really do need to stick with equities. Uh, but you got to be very cautious because the markets, the VIX, everything is primed and ready for a fairly sharp correction. And you know, last December was a bloodbath for equities, and you never know it, it could happen again. And uh, and that's all reason why we use stops and technical analysis. Uh, you can get out before there's too much damage done if the market does go against the analysis. But at this point, we're looking for a pullback to fill Monday's gap on the SP500. So once this week's gains have been negated and sold back down, it's probably going to be a good opportunity to get long again. And at that point, um, we will probably see the safe havens turn back down and and roll over because right now. The play is still long equities. Uh, until that's not the play, that's that's where the money needs to be going. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Jim. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen from the thetechnicaltraders.com. If you have any questions for Chris or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.